Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 12.23 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with the updated tier list for all 5 roles to give you an idea what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good in each role this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over your other players in solo queue. Just to clarify for you guys, this tier list is aimed at what we consider the middle of the elos of plat and gold. So when we have something on this list that doesn't quite line up with the pro play meta or what you see in the high elo streams, that's probably why. Make sure to subscribe because we make meta videos like this just to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everyone can agree that Riot does well, the skins. Now that winter is just around the corner, we're getting this year's batch of snow themed skins. The champs receiving the winter blessed skins are Diana, Shaco, Swain, Zillion, Zoe, and Warwick, who is also getting a prestige version of the skin. Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. Sunfire Ages is seeing a little bit of a buff, with the cost going down by 100 gold, and the HP it gives going up from 400 to 500. Contrary to what a lot of people are saying, tanks aren't suddenly broken with all the new items that they have to play with. That's why 7 of the 9 champions being buffed this patch are tanks. Which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of, because when the tank meta is a thing, I just don't find the game just as fun. But that's just my opinion. Those champions' specific buffs, along with Sunfire's build, should be enough to help them move back to a healthier spot. Ravenous Hydra is also seeing a nerf. The additional Omni Vamp that you get from stacking this passive is being removed, and the splash damage is being lowered from 60 and 30%, down to 50 and 25% for melee and ranged champions respectively. This definitely makes the item a little bit less overbearing, but it's still going to be plenty strong on the champions that build it. The jungle as a whole is also getting some attention in this patch. There are quite a few changes here. Companions do a bit less base damage, but now have scaling off of bonus armor and MR to help tanks out. 20% damage amp no longer applies on epic monsters. Camps give a bit more sustain now, but treats give less gold since junglers are overall making more money now than before. They also give a bit more XP at level 69 and onwards. Moss Stomper's tenacity and slow resist duration after the shield breaks is being halved from 3 seconds to 1.5. Grub and the large razor beak are having their auto attack range reduced, and the leash range centers on the camps have been offset a bit. These changes should all make it a bit easier to move around and kite monsters. The combination of higher sustain and camps being more easily kited means that junglers should at least be a bit healthier on their clears. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the updated tier list. Alright, before we get into the updated tier list, I want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuide experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Okay, now let's finally get to that tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. Malphite moves up to the S tier of this patch. Something that we always try to stress in these tier list videos is that you can't just measure champion strength by their win rate alone 100% of the time. Malphite looks kind of bad right now, with a 49% win rate. But that's because a lot of people are tanking his stats with stupid builds. Heart Seal, ROA, and Ludens are not a good way to build Malphite, and bring him down quite a bit. When you look at his win rate with Gauntlet and Jack Show, it's a bit over 51%, and that's pretty darn solid. Rock solid. So, with Sunfire being buffed, Hydra being nerfed, and him getting some direct buffs himself, Malphite should be looking really good this patch, potentially even being OP tier once the changes hit live. All of the above applies to Malkai as well. He's actually doing even better than Malphite, with an almost 53% win rate when built with Jack Show. These changes may be enough to make him OP as well, but for now, we'll err on the side of caution and place him in the S tier. Scion's buff should have him in about the A tier, though this may be a bit too hopeful. The changes that he's getting are pretty light, and with him being one of the weaker top laners overall right now, he may still need a little bit of help after this. Tom Kench's buffs are most likely just making it so that you can get more out of building AP on him, which may not seem like much for somebody that builds full tank, but there are two things to consider. The first is that a lot of times, adding in ratios that don't really make sense, like AP on Nars ult, are sometimes there just give extra power to Baron buff. The other is that you can also itemize a little bit of AP on him via Demonic Embrace. It actually gives him a massive spike of damage when you pick it up as a third or fourth item, so definitely give it a try once these changes go live. We'll be putting him in the A tier for now. Zack also lands in the A tier of this patch, though this is a bit tentative. The changes that he's getting could very easily push him up to the S tier or even higher. Check back next week for a mid-patch update for a more certain placement. Cho'Gath definitely has been the very worst of all the top lane tanks since the changes. I'm sure that we've all seen the videos of Cho'Gath looking like a raid boss with autos from ADCs not even putting a dent in his massive health pool. But I promise, those cases are definitely in the minority. 
Cho is doing really poorly right now, and most of the time, you're gonna end up being ran over by most laners and end up just being useless. The buffs that he's getting this patch are a nice move in the right direction, but with them being so weak, I don't think they're gonna be enough to make him a consistent pick at all. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Nocturne moves up to the OP tier. He's already been doing super well lately, and with so many of the other top tier picks being hit with some decently heavy nerfs this patch, it shouldn't really be a surprise that he's wiggling in to claim a spot up here. What makes Nox so strong is that he can build super beefy like a bruiser, but maintains his assassin capabilities. You can go for picks on somebody farming in a side lane just as easily as you can just jump into a team fight without having to wait for your teammates to make a play. The nurse Mordekaiser is getting this patch are aimed at lowering his clear speed and they're pretty significant, but with such an overwhelmingly OP champion, he's still definitely going to be strong. We think he's worthy of being in the S tier still, but we could be wrong either way. He could still be OP after this, or you could go a bit further down to the A tier. Like Mord, Trundle is seeing some nerfs that are going to be pretty impactful, but he's also in such a strong spot right now that he should still be in the lane somewhere between the S and A tier. For now, we'll go with the higher option. Amu is getting a lot of little changes to his kit. Basically, he'll be a bit beefier and do some more damage in extended fights. Those buffs, along with the Sunfire ones, should help the little guy out a bit. We'll be putting him in the A tier for now. Shivana seems to be getting the harshest nerfs of all our OP tier picks. With so much damage being taken out of her W and E, we think that she'll drop down to the A tier. She's definitely still a viable pick, but I think the goal here is to make her less safe. You still need to do the tank build, but you won't carry as hard. If you want to be 1v9, you need to be building a little bit more damage, making her a bit more high risk, high reward. Lilia also drops down to the A tier. Taking 30 damage off an ability that you can spam so much really does add up fast. That's extra swings to clear your camps, and with Lilia being a champion that is so heavily focused on clearing the jungle, that can be a big nerf on its own. But it's not just your clear speed to worry about. Q is also your main source of damage when fighting other champions. Losing out on so much damage from your Q can mean that fights that you previously may have won can definitely swing the other direction now. Zack and Malkai are pretty much in the same spot right now, so we'll be lumping them together for this. The preseason has been really rough for them, and with both of them being between the D and C tiers, they're heavily reliant on the old jungle items, Ani Vamp, and Drain Effect to sustain as they cleared. Now they clear slower and have way less health, and in the new jungle, being behind early is a lot more punishing due to the evolution system companions have. The buffs they're receiving as well as them now factoring bonus resistances into jungle companions may help a bit, but I don't think either of these picks will make it much higher than the B tier. Malkai maybe has a chance since his Q is his bread and butter and is getting a pretty decent buff, so he could end up in the A tier, but I'm not too hopeful about it. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Twitch continues to be such a successful mid laner that we're moving him up to the OP tier. You may think that a squishy marksman like Twitch would just be a fodder for certain champions mid, but that's severely underestimating what he can do as a laner. It's not like he can just sit there and let people kill you. Twitch's damage is absolutely insane. Even at level 2, you can easily get a foe under half HP with a single trade. He bullies melee and range champions alike, his realms are OP, and his scaling is nuts. Plus, he can build to kill tanks with Riftmaker, or itemize Crown and Zanyas to be immortal, even against scary assassins later. Sinja drops to the A tier of this patch. She's definitely still viable, but due to her insane performance in Master Plus getting her some pretty decent nerfs this patch, she's probably not going to be a champion worth blind picking every game. It's better to wait and make sure that you have good matchups first, since her scaling is a lot less guaranteed now. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Once again, we have another patch where the bot lane meta isn't really shifting much, with just one entry per role here. With a huge list of changes this patch, we'll be moving Zeri up to the A tier. This is definitely super tentative. The aim of this mini revamp that she's getting is to make her stronger again, but also make her a bit of a riskier pick. That means you'll actually need to have pretty good mechanics to make her look good. That being said, objectively, she could be broken, but she'll probably also have a really high skill floor, and will likely look way better in high elo than the lower and middle ranks. To finish things off, we have our supports. For this role, the only change worth making right now is moving Nami up to the OP tier. With her having a super strong laning phase and still scaling decently well into the later parts of the game, she may be the best support to main right now. She pairs well with both aggressive ADCs and hyper carries, and can even make a good lane partner for mage bot laners. Not only is she strong, but she's also pretty easy to use as well. With the bot lane meta being so static for so long, and Riot not really seeming to want to change that, there's a good chance Nami will remain this strong up to the new season, so you definitely want to add her to your champion pool. And that concludes our patch 12.23 rundown. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comment section below. Also be sure to join our Discord in the description link below. And one last thing, good luck in your games, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.